Mary Alice Wallstrom. Honor, Elizabeth Juanillo. Gabriela Silvina Weissman. Wendy Welcome to Lunch Break. Alex I'm Kelly Rosario. Grant. You are looking at a live shot from the September 11th Memorial Service in downtown New York, Victor still in progress. Here are some of the scenes from earlier this morning. Benjamin James the true legacy of 9-11 will not be one of fear or hate or division. It will be a safer world, a stronger nation, and a people more united than ever before. For no matter how many anniversaries you experience for at least an instant. The terror of that moment returns. Former New York Governor George Pataki was at the ceremonies this morning and now he's here with us to talk about how the tributes have been shifting. Governor, thank you so much for joining us. Happy to be with you, Kelly. Now, I feel like we, we hear it, we see it repeatedly today, the phrase never forget, but mm -hmm. now 11 years later, we have seen some shift in, in how people are marking this day, uh, notably today with the ceremony, a little bit of a, a simpler ceremony than in years past. Are we as a country moving on? Uh, I think we did move on. Uh, and, and yes, I, I, there is a difference in the ceremony at Ground Zero today, and I think it's the right thing. Mayor Bloomberg said no political speeches, no politicians, just let family members respectfully read the names. That was the right decision. Uh, we moved on the day of September 11th when we realized many for the first time the nature of the threat to our freedom. And we've moved on since then in a way that uh, certainly at Ground Zero makes me proud to see the memorial, to see the plazas, to see the Freedom Tower rising, the other private office buildings rising. And uh, today they announced an agreement uh, to finally start after a year rebuilding, uh, moving forward with the museum. So I think that's positive. But uh, uh, we have to go forward. We can never forget. But that's not inconsistent with going forward with the confidence in our great country and our freedoms that we're entitled to have as Americans. And it sounds like people certainly are still very emotional about this. Uh, moving on doesn't necessarily mean forgetting those. Uh, moving on can never mean forgetting. I, I was down there a little early this morning, and I went over to where the names are engraved on the side of the uh, reflecting pools where the tower stood, and this elderly gentleman in a fireman's uniform comes up and uh, says hi, and he goes, I'm looking for my son. And, you know, you hear something like that, and for all the sense we have, of the loss of September 11th. Uh, when you see something like that, it's like it happened this morning, uh, not 11 years ago. And that's appropriate because we should never forget those who died, never forget the courage of so many who responded with such incredible bravery and willingness to sacrifice. But we're Americans, you know, we, we, while we remember, while we reflect, while we always pay tribute, we're going to move forward as well. And then as we do so, I mean, we've been hearing from family members this morning talking about, you know, that this in its own way is moving a little bit into history in the way of Pearl Harbor, mm -hmm. uh, but that, you know, we even have a, a whole generation of Americans that, that don't remember that day and can't say like you or I could where right. we were. How do we teach them about this and make sure that they understand its impact? Kelly, that I think is the most important question to ask today. Uh, it is critical that uh, future generations, not just those who might not have been born 11 years ago, but future generations not born today, understand the magnitude of what happened. And we should teach it in schools. But I th one of the things I'm most proud of is that's why we did Ground Zero the way we did. The centerpiece is this memorial. And even though the museum was paralyzed, unfortunately, for a year and the office towers have yet to rise and be occupied, last year more than four and a half million people came. And those four and a half million got to see the, the magnitude of the loss, to touch the names and understand the, the role that individuals played. Uh, and as the museum opens, uh, we're gonna tell that story. And it was always not about today or tomorrow, next week, it was always about not just learning it in a textbook, but being able to come, visit, feel, touch, and experience both the horror of September 11th, which will never go away, and the sorrow of the loss, but also the courage and the strength that New Yorkers and Americans showed. And that's an important part of the story, story that I pray is never forgotten. 
That is, and I mean, you mentioned the museum. Of course, we've got the news from last night that construction will finally proceed with that. Uh, what sort of role will that museum play in, in uh, you know, for it's, uh, I'm really disappointed it's not open this year the way it should have been. And it was just, uh, I think, ridiculous that people allowed uh, what really was uh, not a major dispute to derail things for a year when they could have worked it through and ultimately settled without having the delay. But what the museum will do is, is tell individual stories so that you will have around the reflecting pools, pools you'll know the magnitude uh, of both the structures that we lost and also you'll see the thousands of names of the people we lost. But downstairs they'll be able to hear the individual stories. Stories of a firefighter who responded, a civilian who was there, and their wonderful history before that tragic day. And they'll be able to touch and feel things like some of the emergency response vehicles that were destroyed. So, so I think it's gonna be enormously powerful. I think it already is enormously powerful with the memorial uh, that has had such an impact. And between the two, uh, we have done and are going to continue to do our part to know that people in the future understand the magnitude of what happened.